Okay, so here we are in the last section of chapter one, and let's get started with this. And it is going to deal with mathematical treatment of measurement results. And in this section, we're going to explain the dimensional analysis, which is known as the factor label approach to mathematical calculations involving quantities. We're also going to use dimensional analysis to carry out unit conversions for a given property and computations involving two or more properties. Now, specifically, dimensional analysis is a mathematical technique that allows you to use units to solve problems involving measurements. A lot of times we, we will utilize what are called conversion factors, right? And we may know all kinds of different conversion factors. Some we know off the top of our head. Sometimes we have to look them up. We don't remember them exactly. But a conversion factor would be something like, in one foot, there is 12 inches. And the neat thing about conversion factors is you can also flip them, right? So I could also say that this is equal to 12 inches over 1 foot, okay? Uh, another thing I could say uh, in 1 dozen eggs, there are 12 eggs. And I could say there are 12 eggs. I could flip it, just like I did in the previous example, uh, in 1 dozen eggs. Okay, so these are conversion factors. We do this all the time. There's 60 seconds in a minute, um, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, um, so on and so forth. Um, so let's do a simple quick problem here. Let's say I had um, 3.2 yards, and I wanted to know how many feet that was. Okay, so my known is 3.2 yards, and my unknown is the number of feet feet okay now the general format for doing these problems is you're gonna write your known in the top left box okay and knowns gonna have a label right some kind of unit and we're gonna put that over one now we're gonna bring the label for that unit down the label of your known and uh, in the top right box maybe directly or maybe after a step or two we'll ultimately get to the label that we're looking for of the unknown and when you have the label of the unknown in your upper right box you're probably uh, set up as long as you did all the prior steps right you should be set up correctly and it's just a matter simply at that point in time of doing your mathematical operation of multiplying fractions and as we remember multiply fractions straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and then we divide. And what this would look like in this problem here, let's go ahead and do it. So let's say I've got my known here, 3.2 yards. I'm going to write this in the upper box, 3.2 yards over 1. Now my label here is yards, so that's what I bring down. Remember, we're bringing the label down only, yards. And the label of my unknown, what I'm looking for here, is feet. And now because I have a direct, uh, a direct conversion factor between feet and yards, I can go right to it, okay? And I know that conversion factor is that there are three feet in one yard, right? Or I could say there, uh, in one yard there are three feet. Now if I look here, I've got yards on the bottom. Which one of these two options has yards on the bottom? Well clearly this one does, right? So that's the format I want to use. In one yard there are three feet. Notice how they look identical. Okay. Now I can go back and I can cross out my label for yards. And now I can clearly see, like I said, you operate um, when you do your order of operations for multiplying fractions, you multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and then we're going to go ahead and divide. So 3.2 times 3 is 9.6. Now the only label I have left on the top is feet. For my denominator, I have 1 times 1, which is 1, and there's no label left. They've been wiped out when I cross the labels out here, one on the top, one on the bottom. So what I have essentially is 9.6 feet over 1, which we know is going to be just 9.6 feet. And that would be your answer, okay? And that's just doing a simple dimensional analysis problem. Now, let's do one other type of problem. Let's say we wanted to calculate, it. let's say we had a month that had 30 days, okay? And I said, how many seconds are in a month? Now, 
we can't go directly from seconds to month very easily, right? We just don't know what that is off the top of my head. But I do know several different things. Uh, in this case here, I could say I know that there are 60 seconds in a minute. And there are 60 minutes in an hour. One hour. And there are 24 hours in one day. In this case, they tell me the month has 30 days. So we're going to say in one month, there is there are 30 days. Okay. Now, doing having all this information, all these different conversion factors here, I can start my process and start working through it. Now, again, um, what I'm going to start with in my upper left box is my known. I have um, one month. Okay. That's my known, and this is my unknown. How many seconds? So one month over one. And again, like we did previously, we're going to bring the label down. Month. Now, what do I know? Well, in one month, I have 30 days. Okay, So I have, if I have month in the bottom, that means I had to put days on top. And like we said, in one month, there's 30 days. That's a conversion factor. I could have one month over 30 days or 30 days over one month. And I can see that I had the one month in the bottom. So it forces me to put the 30 days on the top. So those cross out. Now we have days. So again, I bring my label down diagonally. So I have days. And in this case, I could say, well, in a day, there's 24 hours. Okay. So in one day, there's 24 hours. Now I can cross that out. Okay. And now I've got hours, and I bring that down diagonally. And I could say, in, uh, there are 24 hours, or excuse me, let's not do that, because that would go backwards. Let's just say we have, um, in one hour, there are 60 minutes, because we're ultimately, did it again, we're ultimately trying to get back to, for some reason it jumped out here, let me get back into it, okay, for, um, so we want to say that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So now I can cross out hours. Now I want to get from minutes to seconds. So I'm going to, again, bring my label down in minutes. There are a certain number of seconds. Okay. So I could say in one minute there are 60 seconds. That's another conversion factor. So really what I've used here is one, two, three, uh, four conversion factors, right? One after another. And, and it always forces me to bring my label down, as you can see, bring my label down diagonally. So now in my upper right box, I have the correct label, right? The label of my unknown, which is seconds, right? And we started with what we knew in the, uh, for the top left box here, which is one month. So now I've got it set up, and I can go ahead and uh, punch the problem out. And so what I have on the top is 1 times 30 times 24 times 60 times 60. Now, I need my calculator to go ahead and do that. But I can see if I look at my denominator, I have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. So we know the denominator is going to be, I'll write an equal sign here. We know the denominator is going to be 1. We know the label for the top because they're all crossed out except for seconds is going to be seconds. And so now I got, all I got to do is punch my math out. Okay, so I've got 1 times 30 times 24 times 60 and times 60 again. And I get a number of, quite a large number, 2592000. So I would have 2592000 seconds over 1. Now let me rewrite that. Two five nine two zero 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 seconds. Okay, over one. So I'm just going to write that as this, and, and then these are commas, right? Now we wouldn't leave this like this. We'd put it in scientific notation, right? So we'd go two point five nine two times ten to the, and you moved your decimal essentially six places, right? So it'd be ten to the sixth. Okay. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're just backing it out. Two point five nine two times ten to the six seconds is your answer. Okay, in a month you have two million five hundred ninety-two thousand seconds. Quite a bit. And that's essentially what dimensional analysis is. We'll practice more of these problems in class as you see fit. If you've got it down, then we're in good shape. And uh, I think this effectively ends really all the learning material for the chapter. So thank you for listening.